I feel like verses um, 16 and 17 um, pretty much just confirm everything pretty clearly, right? Um, it's a pretty plain. And uh, verse 18, love never brings fear for it is always related to punishment but love's perfection drives the fear of punishment far from our hearts whoever walks constantly afraid of punishment has not reached love's perfection um and what i got when i read that was um i actually thought i actually thought on how how jesus was never really afraid um, and then I realized that it's because he was full of love, meaning he was full of God because he is God. So he is love. He is, you know, he is God. So he is love. And there's so much, there's so much to unpack there. But when you like, this is powerful right here. Love never brings fear. God never brings fear. We can replace, you know, the word love here with God. So it would read, God never brings fear, for fear is always related to punishment. But God's perfection drives the fear of punishment far from our hearts. Isn't that so true? Isn't that so true? The <laughs> That is so true. I'm sorry. Okay. But God's perfection drives the fear of punishment far from our hearts. Whoever walks constantly afraid of punishment has not reached God's perfection. Wow. 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 So, um, wow. There's just so much there. So, you know, if you... Wow. No, I need to read that again. God never brings fear, for fear is always related to punishment. And you see, I, I can replace the word love with God because God is love, which makes those interchangeable. Um, God never brings fear, for fear is always related to punishment but God's perfection drives the fear of punishment far from our hearts right God's perfection right not our perfection God's perfection drives the fear of punishment from all our hearts because through God you know all of our sins are forgiven all we have to do is ask so you know if if you're, and that's not to say that you're going to do something you shouldn't be doing and then, oh, I'll just repent. I'll pray about it later. No, no, no. That's taking advantage um, of God's grace and mercy. But, you know, if, if we're living right in God's perfection, then there's nothing to be afraid of. It drives the fear of punishment far from our hearts. And whoever walks constantly afraid of punishment then has not reached God's perfection. That's, there's a lot there. We need to underline that one. Yep, underlining right now because that was awesome. Our love for others is our grateful response to the love God first demonstrated to us. Anyone can say, actually, let me backtrack. Our love for others is our grateful response to the love God first demonstrated to us. So again, when we pour into others, that's, you know, 
that's an obedience. That's that's do you know what a response is? Let's look it up. A response is defined as a reaction to something. So our love for others is our grateful response. It's our reaction to the love God first demonstrated to us. And our reaction, you know, if somebody goes like this and, and your reaction is to flinch, that's something you don't even think about. So again, it goes, you know, this is this is a free gift. God is a free gift. And, and I can go back to verse 12 to that if, if we love one another, if we love one another, God makes his permanent home in us and we make our permanent home in him. And, and again, so let's read it and replace God with the word love. Um, but, well, not right here, but hold on. If we love one another, love makes its permanent home in us and we make our permanent home in it right so our love for others is a response and it ties back to that if 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 you have to give god permission how by loving others um, and, you know, I like the NIV, um, for verse 19, because it reads, you know, we love because he first loved us. And, you know, I feel like that can take us into, you know, um, the fact that, you know, you have to love, you have to love God first in order to love because we love because he first loved us not any other way we love because he first loved us how do you love how do you love you know how do you make sure that you're loving god first you're praying you're seeking his face you're you know strengthening your faith you're studying you know who you are because you're studying and then through that you know, you, you'll want to love others because you're going to be experiencing this tremendous, overwhelming love that's just, you know, the overflow is ready to pour out of you. Um, and then it's on a, you, you're going to have to give some away because you're going to have so much that you, you're not going to know what to do with it. So, you know, you, you love God first and then through loving him, you're going to learn who you are and you're going to love yourself and then you'll love others, right? This is, this is the important part. Because of that experience you had of seeking God and reaching this place where now you know who you are and you have an overflow of love, then you're able to love others more easily because you understand them. You understand because you were them. You were them. And now, you know, you've learned some things. You've let God into your life. The Holy Spirit is, you know, pushing you out, making you uncomfortable, um, or maybe not, maybe love is your thing. Um, and you'll love others be simply because you understand them. You understand that, you know, what you're fighting, it's not flesh and blood. It's, it's, it's a principality. It's something in them that's triggered by the love in you. And then, you know, if, if you, I think that if you love on someone enough with the right intention, um, which would be to, to bring them to God and meet them where they are, 
um, you'll be able to do that because you're doing it in the best way possible, which is to relate to people. You know, how can you love someone that you don't relate to? You need to be relatable. And, you know, when you're relatable and you're you who God created you to be, then the people that you were put on this earth for, they're going to gravitate towards you. They're going to gravitate towards you because they were assigned to you, but you need to make sure, you know, that you love God first and you know who you are so that you're not pretending out to be somebody that you're not so that you can complete the assignments that you were put on this earth for. And the people that, you know, God put you here for, they're, they're waiting for you to be you. They're waiting for you to love yourself enough to be you. And there's a lot to unpack right there. Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? Do you know who God says you are? And do you trust and believe in his word enough to know who you are so that you can be you? That's very important. You're not going to be able to touch people that you weren't put here for. You were put here for a specific set of people. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I must be talking to somebody. Um, but you were put here for a purpose and you cannot achieve or succeed at, com at, at completing that purpose until you're comfortable in, in who you've been created to be. Stop trying to impress other people, you know? Um, those are, you know, those are, that's your ego. Put the ego away. God doesn't live there. I could tell you that right now. Put the ego away and be who God created you to be. That's the most important thing we can ever do is just be who we need to be or be who we were created to be so that we can pour what God gave us into others, you know, the ones that we're here for. It's not, it's not about being better than somebody or a sister, such and such, she looks funny. She dresses funny. She talks funny. She walks funny. She prays funny. Like, what? no, we don't need to be worried about any of that. Pray for her. She'll be all right. You know? Um, and I, I mean, there was a lot um, that we talked about here tonight. And um, I, you know, hope that it blessed somebody. Um, I was definitely very nervous and this was, this was not easy, but I just, I thank God, you know, for bringing me from where I came. Um, I was somebody who spent a lot of my life feeling unloved and now that I know who I am, I, I realized that I, I felt unloved, not because there wasn't anyone around to love me, but because I didn't love myself and I didn't love myself because I didn't know who I was because I didn't know who God was. I didn't know, I didn't know who he called me to be, but now that I know there's no greater love and, you know, God is love. So if, if you're lacking any, any form of love in your life, whether that's, you know, love from your parents, love 
from friends, love from, you know, a, a romantic relationship or courtship, um, that, that can all be filled, you know, self-love, all of that, you know, don't depend on self. Self is not going to do it, but God is. When self doesn't show up, God still shows up. Um, so, you know, I, I can speak from experience when I say that when I wasn't showing up for myself, God showed up every time he sent somebody to give me, you know, an encouraging word, to give me 20 bucks, to, to just bless me somehow, you know, and yeah. I'll just leave with that. And I hope that I blessed somebody, even if it was just one person. And God bless you all. Thank you so much.